Hey there, fellow soil enthusiasts. I'm going to share something with you today that might completely change how you think about composting. After years of watching gardeners struggle with disappointing results despite religiously adding compost to their beds, I've discovered why so many of us are missing the mark when it comes to building truly healthy living soil. You've been told that compost is the holy grail of soil building, right? Add more compost, they say. Your plants will love it, they promise. But here's what I've learned through countless soil tests, microscope sessions, and honest conversations with frustrated gardeners. Compost alone is like trying to build a house with just the paint. It's beautiful, it's helpful, but it's missing the foundation that makes everything else work. Let me paint you a picture. Sarah, one of my longtime viewers, reached out last spring completely deflated. She'd been adding homemade compost to her vegetable garden for three years straight. Her compost looked perfect, dark, crumbly, sweet-smelling. Yet her tomatoes were still struggling, her soil felt lifeless after rain, and her harvest was mediocre at best. Sound familiar? Here's the uncomfortable truth. Most of us have been approaching soil building backwards. We've been so focused on feeding our plants that we've forgotten to feed our soil ecosystem. Compost is essentially pre-digested organic matter. It's like giving your soil baby food when what it really needs is a workout routine and a diverse diet to build strength. When you add finished compost to your garden, you're adding nutrients and some organic matter, yes. But you're missing the dynamic biological processes that create real, lasting soil structure. Think about it. In nature, soil isn't built by adding finished compost. It's built by the continuous cycle of living roots, dying plant material, and the incredible underground community that processes it all. Real soil building happens when you create an environment where soil biology can thrive and do what it does best, transform raw materials into stable soil structure. This is where most composting advice falls short. Instead of focusing solely on the end product, we need to understand the process. Your soil is home to billions of microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematodes, and countless others. These tiny workers are the real soil builders. They create the glue-like substances that bind soil particles together, forming those beautiful crumbly aggregates we all love to see. But here's the catch. They need fresh, diverse organic matter to work with, not just finished compost. When you only add compost, you're essentially hiring a construction crew but only giving them the finished materials instead of the raw supplies they need to build something lasting. The microbes need carbon in various stages of decomposition. Fresh leaves, woody material, root exudates from living plants, and yes, some finished compost too. It's the diversity and continuous supply that matters. I learned this lesson the hard way in my own garden. For years, I was the compost king turning bins religiously, monitoring temperatures, creating what I thought was black gold. My soil looked better temporarily after each application, but I wasn't seeing the long-term transformation I expected. The breakthrough came when I stopped thinking about compost as the destination and started seeing it as just one tool in a much larger toolkit. Here's the game changer that transformed my garden and the gardens of hundreds of my viewers. Instead of just adding finished compost, start feeding your soil ecosystem continuously with diverse organic materials at different stages of decomposition. So, what this really means is leaving some areas of your garden just a little bit messy on purpose. Instead of, you know, cleaning up every single fallen leaf, try letting some decompose right where they land. And rather than pulling out every spent plant right away, chop a few and let them break down right where they grew. Honestly, your soil biology is going to thank you for this buffet of materials to work with. The real magic, though, happens when you combine this approach with cover crops or living mulches. These plants are, well, like soil biology factories, pumping out root exudates that feed beneficial microbes all season long. They're creating the kind of biological activity that turns organic matter into stable soil structure. That's actually why regenerative farmers often see much more dramatic soil improvements than home gardeners who just rely on compost alone. 
I started putting this into practice in my own plots by dedicating about one-fifth of my garden space to soil building cover crops each season. And I also began what I like to call strategic neglect, leaving plant residues in place more often and adding fresh organic materials all throughout the season instead of just dumping compost once or twice a year. The results, honestly, were dramatic. Within just one growing season, I could really see and feel the difference in the soil structure. Let me give you a concrete system that you can start implementing this week. Instead of thinking about compost as your main soil amendment, think about creating a continuous feeding system for your soil biology. Start by layering fresh materials directly on your soil throughout the growing season. Grass clippings, autumn leaves, kitchen scraps, garden prunings, but don't compost them first. Instead, use them as mulch and let them decompose in place. This creates what soil scientists call the decomposer food web, right where you want your soil to improve. Your finished compost still has a role, but use it more strategically. Apply it as a lighter dressing rather than a heavy amendment, and always combine it with fresh materials. The compost provides readily available nutrients and some beneficial microbes, while the fresh materials provide the diverse carbon sources that feed the soil biology long term. So, this approach really mimics what happens in healthy forest soils where there's always a layer of organic matter in various stages of decomposition feeding the soil ecosystem below. The key here is maintaining this continuous cycle rather than, you know, the feast or famine approach of just seasonal compost applications. The transformation in my garden happened because I shifted from thinking like a composter to thinking like a soil ecosystem manager. Instead of just making compost, I started creating conditions where soil biology could really thrive and do the heavy lifting of soil building for me. So, this season, I challenge you to try this hybrid approach. Keep making compost if you enjoy it, but, you know, start supplementing with fresh materials and living plants that feed your soil biology all year round. Pay attention to the areas where you implement this strategy versus your traditional compost-only areas. Honestly, I'm confident you'll see the difference within just a few months. Remember, building real soil is a biological process, not just a chemical one. When you work with nature systems instead of trying to replace them, you unlock the kind of soil health that creates truly abundant gardens. If this perspective shift resonates with you and you're ready to dive deeper into soil biology and regenerative growing methods, make sure you're subscribed to the Soil Sensei channel. Hit that notification bell too because I've got some exciting content coming up on cover crop combinations and mycorrhizal fungi that'll take your soil building to the next level. And if this article opened your eyes like it did for Sarah and, well, countless other gardeners share it with someone who's struggling with their soil, together we can grow better gardens from the ground up.